Hi everyone, my name's Stacey and welcome to Quilt Club with Stacey Lee. This is week five and this week we'll be quilting our rail fence quilts. Okay everyone, and now it's time to decide how we want to quilt our quilts and with the blocks we had we could arrange them any way we wanted which now means we have to decide how we want to quilt them which again could be any way you want to. For me, I've got the zigzag look here, so I've decided to quilt in the stitch in the ditch along every single zigzag. So every zigzag you can see here, I've done the stitch in the ditch. And what that means is when I've come along this line here, well then I've also come along this line here, which means on this little bit here, I've actually quilted twice and that's okay. And then I've carried on along here. And then what I could choose to do is I could choose to echo along that stitch in the ditch if I wanted to. I could do whatever I chose. Let's say you have the pinwheel look, and let's say that this, these pieces here are the pinwheel. You might want to echo that pinwheel. And honestly, you can just come up with any ideas you've got. If yours is randomly placed, you might decide you want to quilt along all the main seams. And then again, running along these seams, which will mean you have to place some masking tape or else perhaps get a chalk pen and rule it where you'd like to do your quilted lines. But basically, the sky is the limit. It's the only limitation is your imagination. So just decide what you'd like to do and then let's go for it. Okay, so before we get started, there's a few things you have to make sure you've got prepared. You've chosen your thread color and I'm using white because I've got white in my quilt top and I've used white for my backing, so white works perfectly for me. I've wound a couple of bobbins. I've got my walking foot on. I've checked my stitches on a little sample quilt with a piece of fabric on the top, on the bottom and batting in the middle to replicate a quilt. And I've checked that my stitches are sewing really nicely on that and I've decided how I'm going to quilt my quilt. So remember, we're always starting in the middle of our quilt and working out, and when we can, we're gonna be turning it around. So let's get started. I've already done a lot of my quilting, but I'm gonna do this zigzag here, and I don't know if you can see, but what I've done is I've put a bit of masking tape on my zigzag to help me see where I'm gonna be sewing, because trust me, it can get a little bit confusing when you're sewing, and it's very easy to start following the wrong line. So I found just by putting a little bit of masking tape on here or painter's tape, it just helps you see quickly which zigzag you're following. Okay, so this is where I wanna start quilting. And as you can see, that's the beginning of my block and that's my border. So I'm not coming over that again with stitches or hiding it with my binding. So I need to make sure it's really nice and tidy. So a way to do that is to get the bottom thread to come up so we don't end up with a bird's nest when we start. So what I'll do is lower my needle down with my hand wheel and then bring it back up again. And what that does is it catches the underneath thread from your bobbin and we just give this top thread a yank and then we'll grab this bottom thread here. And when we've got both the threads, we just tuck them behind. And then what we'll do is we'll put the needle down in exactly the same place to begin sewing. So I'll put my foot down and I'm doing stitch in the ditch. And remember, there's one side that's been folded over and down where the seam is. And there's one side that's flat. And when we're doing stitch in the ditch, we're going on the flat side. So like I said earlier, because we're not going over the stitches again or covering the stitches with the binding, we do need to do a back stitch. So what I'll do is I'll go forward two stitches and then I'll just go back two stitches and then I'll sew. So I decided to buy gloves to give them a whirl and I have to say I do think they help. So if you wanted to invest in a pair of gloves, these were $7 from Joann's and I got them with a 40% off coupon. So I think they were quite affordable and they definitely help with gripping of my quilt. So if you are having trouble, it might be something you want to invest in. So let's go and we're gonna go nice and slowly. And remember, we're straightening up as we go. I've got this excess folded to the side and I'm just doing whatever I need to do to have a nice smooth area here. Oh, 
Okay, and I'm going to come up nice and slowly to this block and I want to stop right before it starts and then we're turning around. So I'll come right up to it and when I'm as close as I can get with my needle, I'm going to stop. I'm going to lift my foot up and I'm going to make sure my needle is down. It's critical that your needle is down because if it's not down, your quilt could move. So my needle is down. I'm going to lift my foot up. And then I'm turning my quilt because I want to come down this way. So I'll turn my whole quilt until it's facing me perfectly. I now want to sew now towards me and that's, and my quilt is sitting nicely. And what I want you to do is just make sure everything's sitting smoothly. I always put my hands underneath and give that a little pull to the right and then onto the other side to the left just to make sure there's nothing underneath that's come out of place and once everything's looking nice and smooth I'll carry on and remember I've got my masking tape or painters tape here so I know I'm following this this line down here I'll put my foot down and off we go And then I've come to my join again and I want to come down this side of my masking tape. So I've paused, my needle is down, I'm going to lift my foot up and I will turn my quilt again. And then I'm going to make sure everything's nice and straight and I'm happy, it looks good, there's nothing underneath all bunched up. And then I'll go, I'll put my foot down and I'll continue on, stitch in the ditch all the way to the bottom here. Okay, and now I'll stop. My needle is down, I'll lift my foot up and I'll turn my quilt again and just do whatever you need to do to get your quilt nice and flat where you're working. You might need to shuffle around where it's folded here and remember you can stop and start as much as you like. It's not a race. I feel like the slower you go and the more time you take just pausing, making sure everything's sitting nicely, you'll get a much better result. So now I'm happy, I'm following this line here where my masking tape is and I'll come down to this bit and then we'll turn again. So my needle is down, I'll put my foot down and I'll continue on. Okay, so now we're doing that last edge and I won't be coming along here because I'll be doing my border at the very end. I'll come along with my seams and I'll do my top and my bottom and then I'll do the two sides. Okay, so I will go back and do back stitch. I'll go back stitch two and forward stitch two or this machine that I'm using today actually has a tack stitch so I can press that and that will tack that down for me and it's cut my thread for me but if you don't have that I would go back stitch two and then forward again two just to make sure it's nice and secure. So don't forget when you've finished your quilting, if you check the back, it's a really quick visual way of seeing if you've missed any quilting because you should be able to see your pattern in it. And if you've missed a line, you'll spot it really quickly. Okay, everyone. So now I've finished quilting my quilt. I've gone along all my zigzags and then I've come along my borders. And what you might like to do is then also echo your borders, especially if your batting requires you to quilt within every four inches. 
So what I'd like you to do is quilt your quilts. I would like you to have fun and take your time. So nice and slowly. And if you're having any problems, if you're getting frustrated, making mistakes, or perhaps you're getting a sore neck or shoulders, just take a break. It doesn't all have to be done in one go. You might want to do half an hour every night and just make it something fun that you look forward to. So once you've finished that, I would then like you to go to your first quilt week five notes where I tell you how to square off your quilt and bind it and then your rail fence quilt will be finished and I can't wait to see all your photos. Thank you for joining me and I hope you had fun. Thank you for watching my videos. If you're enjoying them, please like, subscribe and leave a comment.